going to talk about the state that the NHS is in and try and give you a bit of comedy with it as well. It's a serious situation, but I'm going to try and make it funny. Well, not the situation. Anyway, let's go. Hey everybody, welcome back to Heart Talks. Today I'm talking about the NHS, the National Health Service. Now, obviously I've used the NHS a lot over the years and I have been treated by some amazing, just stunning, brilliant, amazing, wonderful, amazing doctors and nurses and specialists over the years. I've also had my fair share of fools and idiots that have looked after me um looked after being the wrong word but you know who who have dealt with me so it's taken a long time to get a team because i have so many different things going on so it's taken a long time to get a team that can kind of work together um but what i want to say is that the nhs started in 1948 in england and wales and um, UK res residents were entitled to free health care um, that didn't include glasses or dental work or stuff like that but you could get you know if you were having a heart attack or you're having a stroke you, the NHS would help you and there wouldn't be any charge for it. At the end of 2015 the deficit for the NHS was 2.4 billion 2.4 billion deficit you know it's the highest it's ever been since the NHS was started. People are being refused drugs, operations are being cancelled or rescheduled. The waiting time for appointments has doubled. The waiting time actually in accident and emergency is supposed to be a maximum of four hours. That hasn't been reached in the last couple of years. So things are definitely deteriorating and the government need to take their finger out of their wherever they've got it and work on it because we need this service I need this service it's always been paid like ta it's been paid, funded by taxation and income support and that's been fine with me I've grown up with that and I accept it and I think it's a good thing because everybody needs it a few years ago I had some cell transplantation done and to do with my kidney and I was in a ward I was a high risk infection because of HIV and because of diabetes and because of having an operation. So I was high, high, high risk for infection. And um, I, my bed was like inches away, you know, 30 centimeters away from the next bed where there was a guy on a commode six, seven times a day, pooping out everything that he'd ever eaten. And no offense to him, but the smell and the noise and Jean had to bring me up a quilt because I was so cold in this hospital. I got an infection, I got a chest, I got a cold, I got an infection in my wound and they had to take me back to surgery and remove everything that they had put in. And I, for months, I was suffering with that. But that was one case for me. At the same time, at the same time, there has been wonderful amazing stunning brilliant doctors that have looked after me and that continue to look after me my hiv specialist rachel you know my, the my diabetic doctor um you know the, 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 some of them are really amazing and the people on the ward some of those nurses are just they just run round ragged from morning till night and they're amazing you know, I, I nursed and did hospice nursing many, many years ago. And you have to care about what you're doing. Really, you do. You have to you have to have that attachment to the patient and your job and what you're doing to be able to wipe someone's backside or clean up vomit or hold somebody's hand when they're dying. And these nurses do an amazing job. And this is a shout out to them. And all the specialists and the doctors and that but as I say there's a hell of a lot wrong and it's about time that the people that 
are organising the NHS, did something about it, got us out of that deficit, got people who are sick, fast treatment, people not waiting on waiting lists so long that they die before they get the treatment, people not in corridors. You know, it's horrible being in a corridor in a seat, but being in a corridor for hours on end on a bed, it shouldn't be allowed. I try to end on an up note, and what I'm doing is I have done the hospital catwalk. So basically, now I didn't know this, I said this to my friend and she said to me, every gay man walks down a corridor, wherever it might be, and imagines it being a catwalk. Now I had never ever heard of this before and this is my, this was my dream, my plan, so I'm copywriting it. And basically what, you know, they're white corridors, they've got white ceiling tiles, they've got those big lights you know if you're on, if you're on a hospital bed being wheeled down there to to surgery or to another ward or to see a specialist it's scary it's not nice and i always let you know i've often often been lying there thinking what can i do to make this a better thing and so i came up with a hospital catwalk now jean my friend jean helped me put this video together because i'm telling you Going into hospitals, wearing different wigs and running down corridors. It's not as easy as it sounds. Yes, I am growing my beard. Some people have asked. I am trying to grow it. It grows in 700 different directions. So I'm probably going to look like Grizzly Adams by next week. But the next video is going to be the one year anniversary of Heart Talks. Can you believe it? I am I'm amazed. But... I need your questions because we're going to have a big Q&A. Please like this video, share it with your friends, with your family, with anybody you think would get a buzz from it. And please remember to subscribe to Heart Talks. Thank you. And I'll see you in two. I mean, I'll see you in two. Two weeks, that is. Enjoy the catwalk. Mm -hmm.